Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so I'm just outside of Chikuzen Maibaru Station, which is in an area of Kyushu, the island of Kyushu in Japan, known as Itoshima. Itoshima is right outside the city of Fukuoka. And this is a very quiet town. And what kind of watch shopping could you do here? Well, really what you'd probably do is take a train into Fukuoka, all right? And it would take about 30, to 40 minutes to get into Fukuoka and, and then you could pretty much get whatever watch you wanted but limited to the city of Maibaru what kind of watch shopping could you do what kind of Rolex could you get let's find out okay so I'm standing in front of this recycle shop as they're known uh, full of used and pre-owned goods um, but no watches they have washing machines appliances knickknacks but no watches but right next door is an interesting sort of uh, old-fashioned restaurant it reminds me of something out of uh, the 1970s here in Japan not that I was here but uh, that kind of image let's look in the window all right so you have some decorations and then pictures of the food and what I particularly liked was the display of drinks you got the coke in the glass bottle highball is what that says highball and got a beer right there. It looks like an, another bigger beer. And then to the right, Nihonshu or Japanese sake. All right, so it's raining here, overcast, about 28 degrees, not too hot. But anyway, um, walking down the street, coming away from the station, and I think there is a, a place where you can buy a, a watch up here. We'll stop in, but I think it's going to be quartz only. Uh, we'll see. All right, guys. So, uh, now I've been in this place before. When I got my grandfather's watches, I, I remember taking, I think it was the Timex here, and there's a quote watchmaker here, but he really just changes batteries. All of the watches there are, are of the quartz variety. And so, at the time, I was sort of green when it came to watches and you know I thought hey a watchmaker is a watchmaker well I couldn't be more wrong there because even watchmaking watchmakers couldn't deal with the Timex or wouldn't deal with the Timex so uh, all watchmakers are not created equal that's for sure but uh, yeah that that's sort of a shop where I think it's geared towards older people they sell they sell glasses and you can pick up some glasses and a new quartz watch. Pretty much everything they had was uh, quartz, quartz watches, uh, except I think for, for a, a pocket watch. Actually, the pocket watch, the, the battery might have been dead because there were a few that I asked about and, and they were quartz, but the battery was dead. So uh, geared towards older people, not the watch aficionado. If you need something on your wrist, just to help you keep time um, and, and you want to pick something up when you when you get your glasses I guess that's the kind of place you want to go really nice guy though for sure he was changing the battery I think in somebody's watch on the first floor chocolate now that's a nail salon but from the second floor up those are known as snacks and snacks are a type of Japanese bar if you go into a snack you'll probably see a counter with seats around it there might be 
no tables. There might be just a few tables, probably two at the most. And there'll be a middle-aged woman behind the counter and she runs the place, likely she owns the place. She might have hired a few young girls to work as bartenders. And when I say bartenders, they don't really mix drinks. They more just pour, pour beer and pour whiskey. And really their main purpose and the mama-san's main purpose is just to socialize with you and talk with you. And of course, they'll drink the alcohol that you buy for them, but it's sort of like hostess bar light. You know, it's not, it's not, they're not gonna really dote on you too much or light your cigarettes or laugh at every single one of your jokes, but, but they'll definitely give you a social, you know, social experience. And, uh, and I think it's more popular with, with the older crowd. 40s is even a little too young for it. Although you'll see 40 year old guys I want to say like 50s, 60s, and ultimately I think it's a pretty uh, unsatisfying experience, but some people like it. Now at the end of the night, you'll be presented with a bill and, you know, good luck as to figuring out how the Mama-san came to come to that price. I guess it's partially how much of a pain in the ass you were or how much she likes you. Um, could you go in and just ask for a beer uh, and ask how much and, and pay that probably, but that's not really the way these places work. All right, so this area would be, I guess, the nightlife strip here in my Maibaru. And they've got darts bars, you know, where you can play darts, an, an airsoft bar where you can shoot uh, airsoft guns. And then you've got, uh, like this, you've got some uh, hostess clubs and you can see 60 minutes for about 3,000 yen. That's uh, 30 bucks for 60 minutes of drinking and talking with, uh, you know, a hostess where she'll light your cigarettes and, and make you feel like a, an alpha male, no matter where you are uh, on, the, on the food chain. All right, and so on the left, Dollhouse, that's another hostess club. I would say that's probably the best hostess club here I've been to it and the hostesses are Japanese, they're not from another country. And uh, yeah, it was decent, it was fun. And then what small town would be complete without a rundown porno store where you can stumble to drunk after you've been entertained by hostesses and uh, walk out what I think is ultimately unsatisfied, which you will be. Another cool retro looking restaurant. I love the window displays. I just, think they probably haven't changed in 20 years and nothing like a coke in a glass bottle so an outdoor walking arcade with with kimono stores and pottery stores kind of a pretty area and then behind me a yakitori place where you can have some grilled chicken on a kebab with some beer kitahata which is pretty much uh like that first place uh we went to uh batteried watches and glasses and uh i'll spare you what i saw in there basically court seikos and and some g-shocks uh not even really what i would call fashionable or good g-shocks um and you know, brands you see here like Reguna and Alba, which are just real low-end Coors watches. I think they're probably made in China and get them for, for uh, probably 50 bucks, which is way too expensive for them. Oftentimes, recreation in a small town involves drinking. So you've got various liquor stores, you buy beer here, um, whiskey, Nihonshu, Japanese sake, shochu. And uh, here in Kyushu, shochu is uh, very popular, specifically emo shochu, which is sweet potato shochu. All right, and this is where you would go to sell your Rolex when you spent too much money at the hostess bar or the porno store. I shudder to think how much they would give for my GMT Master II. Uh, my guess is 6,000, 7,000 USD. Um, but we've got some beautiful uh, pictures up here. On the left, that's uh, GMT Master 2 Pepsi. You can see the Swiss indicates that that's a Luminova dial. So 1997 would be my guess. And that's a hollow in-link bracelet. 
And then on the right, it's a Swiss made dial. It looks like, uh, it looks shiny actually. It looks like, uh, yeah, look at the lugs on that. That's gotta be a, a ceramic sub, a ceramic date sub. Behind me, Book Off, which is the absolute pinnacle of watch shopping here in my body. Let's check out what they have. They sell used musical equipment, so we'll start out with a couple nice Martin guitars. This one's from 1973. The one on the left is from 66 or 69. These are like the Rolexes of guitars. An Omega Speedmaster Reduced. The Reduced is quite a bit cheaper than the manual wind. Sapphire Sandwich, these are known as. I wouldn't mind a reduced, an automatic. I do like automatics, and uh, the size is, is pretty compact and nice, but if you really want that authentic Speedmaster, you gotta get the manual wind. That's a, a DeVille from the 1970s, Omega DeVille, not a bad looking watch, and not a bad looking price. That's about $240 for you know vintage dress watch and various other Omegas of no consequence. All right, a beautiful ladies oyster. I love this, uh, such a nice look. I'd probably go for a sportier dial though. And what I think is the best thing in the shop, this is a pre-ceramic date sub. We'll take a look at it more closely in a second. That's debatable as to whether it's the best thing in the shop because as you'll see on the left is a ceramic sub, a ceramic date sub. And a lot of people would go for that. Now, there was no price to be found, so they couldn't really tell me anything about you know, how much or whether it was really for sale or not. But that's okay because I was more interested in this anyway. All right, the Rehot is engraved. So this is a, a later model. Rehot's all nice and lined up. Very clean looking example. Now we'll take a look at the lugs in a minute, but it looks unpolished to me and I would probably believe it was unpolished. Now, I didn't have my loop with me. I wish I had. Um, but apparently it had been polished, okay? According to the saleswoman, it had been polished. And after she said that, on the bottom right lug, I, I could find some indication that it might have. But without a loop, it really could have could have passed for unpolished because the camphers and the bevels looked just about perfect. Here's a wrist shot now. It was definitely missing some links because there were no links in the box. So you gotta wonder where those links went and no papers. And I thought for about 10 grand, I thought that was a little expensive for no papers. You gotta wonder where the links went. It was running 25 seconds fast, so it needs an overhaul. They hadn't given it an overhaul, but they had polished it and the bezel was a little stiff. It actually felt the way my bezel felt on my GMT when I took it off and put it back on. So, you know, Rolex, they know how to put the bezel back on and it's just perfect. It's really smooth and it has a great feel to it. But, you know, when somebody like myself takes the bezel off and puts it back on, it, it gets stiff and, and kind of weird. And I think whoever took it off, probably when they polished it, didn't quite put it back on as well as RSC could. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these close-ups of the lug. Something's definitely squirrely with that one. I think I can see signs of polishing there, but it's really tough without a loop. Another indication that this really needs an overhaul was when you screwed down the crown. You had to almost push it in as you screwed it um, because it just didn't smoothly screw down. A bit overpriced I think I think this should be nine all right so this is a Tiffany and company watch and from here on out we're gonna see some Tissos and really I gotta be honest with you guys it it goes downhill from now I would stop the video check out what Archie luxury is up to there's nothing here for you guys anymore okay I would exit now because it 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 gets pretty ugly as far as watches go. I'm warning you. We've got a Quartz Hamilton. Yeah, um, not my cup of tea. 
all right, and some quartz tags. Affordable, but who would want one? Tag Hour, I think, has sort of a an okay reputation among people that know a little bit about watches, I think. It's going to sound snobby, I think, but uh, I think people really into watches probably know better than to get a tag or something like this. Samir, no clue. Uh, it says Swiss. Um, it's about the price of a Steinhardt, so uh, no interest in even Googling it. Uh, this is, uh, wow, horrible. And wow, $400 for that. Uh, pretty gaudy, pretty ugly. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, guys, get out while the getting's good. It only gets worse. This is uh, e-post. Never heard of it, but boy, forty-seven thousand yen. That's like approaching five hundred dollars. So, I would take my money elsewhere for sure. Um, now this looks like Gillishe, but it looks like fake Gillishe. It looks really. It's like kind of plasticky, and it looks like machine, not hand done. I suppose this is decent. This is a mother of pearl Astron. You know, kind of nice, kind of interesting. If you like Seikos and you like Astrons, not bad. I prefer it to something like that. A, a Marvin watch, which I've never heard of. This was going for 600 USD. And, hey, that's not bad if you're a female two-tone Tudor dive watch. And we're really hitting rock bottom. This is a, a Disney quartz watch, and this is a, a skeleton automatic. I can't imagine what kind of time this keeps. And a quartz Nixon. And Nixon is probably one of the brands I hate the most because their watches are just so oversized. They really wrote the book on oversized watches. Another skeleton watch. This is an automatic. And kind of cool to see, but I give this watch six months and it'll be dead. Same thing with this one. You can tell that's a really cheap movement um, and not something you really need an open heart to, to check out. This is just a different variation. And that looks like something, kind of a fake uh, fake tourbillon. You gotta wonder if those dials actually work. Sometimes on these cheaper watches, um, they, they're more for show. All right, a camera watch. Looks like a camera lens. And, um, a quartz, uh, well, horrible, horrible. Uh, if this doesn't kill your passion for horology, I don't know what will. That's not bad. I think the color scheme on this G Shock is not bad at all. Of course, it's too big for me, um, and I don't like the hands. But, but the black and and bronze look is nice. Very, very stubby hour hand there. Same thing with that. Yeah, give me my F91W any day. It's just too much. And this is quite expensive. Um, I'll let you guys Google this, but that's approaching $700. So probably something special. As is this. I'm assuming this is similarly priced, nearly $800. Master of G, no clue. A Victronox chronograph. I don't see any ticking, so this must be an automatic. You can see the date hasn't finished rolling over, so not a quick change date. It's about 300 USD. Wouldn't bother with it, nor would I bother with this nearly $400 Kentax open heart. It's automatic, yes, but you could do a lot better for $400. A fake Technos GMT and this quartz monstrosity. And who needs an AP Royal Oak when you can save a buck and pick this up? I'm sure it's just as good. That's an Orient down there and another fake Technos Pepsi GMT. Fake bluesy, and if those aren't enough to drive you to drink, I don't know what is.
So I've got some cute bottles of alcohol here. Johnny Walker Black. Johnny Walker Red. Same price. I don't know why you'd pay the same price for red. Never heard of this brand or this uh, kind of whiskey, but looks old, looks good. Ballantines. Old Suntory Whiskey. Some Cognac. And Kabosu are like mini, uh, Japanese mini limes. So this is Kabosu liquor. Kamu Cognac. Some Cutty Sark right there for about three bucks. And in honor of the late Christopher Hitchens, I decided to pick up this Johnny Walker Black, which was his drink of choice. And I also decided to go for that wild card whiskey, which I've never heard of before. Scotch, actually. And I also picked up the Kabosu liquor to try to erase the memory of some of those less than stellar watches. Some Suntory whiskey. And 12-year-old Ballantines. I probably should have picked that up, too. And we're off. And if you've made it this far, I appreciate it. And we'll end on what I think was the best thing in the shop, albeit one to 2,000 USD overpriced. What do you think? All right, there you go. So I've got my whiskey, and I actually decided to go with the uh, kabocha liqueur as well to give it a try. It was cheap, 300 yen. I haven't even had a drop yet, and I already have a headache. Not really. Um, all right, so what do we learn? Well. First of all, if you want a ceramic sub, you're out of luck. Can you imagine if I wanted to buy that? I don't think I'd be able to, trying to pass it off as a display model. Kind of weird. Um, I don't think they could find the price and I don't think the manager was around, but uh, that would be seriously frustrating if I really wanted to buy that model. It was for sure for sale. They had the box up there, but I guess it could be a display model. Who knows, maybe the uh, manager Know somebody who wants it, maybe it's on reserve, or maybe the manager doesn't want to sell it because he wants it himself. Um, it's okay because I would go for that for that Submariner anyway. And I think I've seen that Submariner before. Last year, I want to say I've got a video of it, uh, and it hasn't sold, but it's it's beautiful, and uh, I really like that watch. But uh, what we learned, I think, today is that you don't really want to go watch shopping in my bottle. It's not a not the best place. Perhaps just go drinking, hit the hostess bars, and get some porno here in my bottle. That's my recommendation. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.